Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, hello, thank you for your patience and thank you for being here. I know there are a lot of other interesting sessions going on at the same time. So thanks again for being with me. Today I'm going to tell you a story that has been very important for part of my life for the last 10 years. And this is the story of the site ground brand for which I work. Um, my name is Liliana Yakimova and I'm the marketing director of this company. And um, I would like to start a little bit before the real start of the things. Uh, in 2004, I was a fresh graduate from the American University in Bulgaria. I was studying business administration there. Um, I'm born and I live in Bulgaria. Um, and only recently after I have graduated, I started working in one of the hippest advertising companies in my own country. Should be really cool. <laughs> uh, so how many, how many of you have watched this film, The Mad Men? Okay. Anyway, six, uh, six months after I started working there, I actually realized that the madman style is not what I was looking for. And at this point, very appropriate point in my life, a phone call came and it was from uh, a friend from the university that I was studying with. Um, and he told me that uh, he and few friends of him are starting something new and they would like to invite me to work with them. I asked them what are they going to do and he said web hosting. I said, okay, um, I will be thrilled to work with you because I know you and I think we can do something, some good things, but I should admit that I don't know what web hosting is at all. So he said, don't worry, I know, <laughs> I know that, uh, that that's the truth, but um, we will work together and it will be fine. So here we were, like um, maybe six or seven people. Two of them had some experience with web hosting. They have been working as a part of the support team in another web hosting company for several months before. Uh, there were two people with really strong entrepreneurship spirit and a uh, few other great enthusiasts around. This was the team at the beginning. Um, so at this point, um, we were in our first lesson. Um, that when you hire new people or when you're, when you're looking to for people to work with, uh, the most important things are enthusiasm and ability to learn. Um, even if you're looking for someone that has experience in whatever you're doing, um, I believe that the chances are that if he's not enthusiastic in your brand or if he's not willing to learn the way your company operates or uh, the way you believe things uh, should be properly done, uh, it's not very likely that you will achieve big success. Uh, so this lesson, we, we have been keeping with it for the last 10 years. For every new hire we do in our company, uh, the things we are looking for most are these two. Enthusiasm about working with us and uh, being a quick learner. Uh, so here we were, we started. Um, this was the miracle of birth <laughs> uh, in 2004. The first uh, version of our website was launched. And it looked like this. <laughs> uh, as you can see, plain website uh, with only one page show most and uh, only one web hosting plan, several features. And um, if you can read the text, I'm not expecting you to do that. <laughs> but um, if you could read the text, you will see that um, you can read between the lines that we were explaining to ourselves what web hosting is. We were at this stage <laughs> at some point. Anyway, at the end of the year, uh, we had like 1,000 customers from this website, uh, which was good enough to prove our concept and to uh, show us that we are on the right track, but it wasn't enough to feed us and our families. Not that we had families at that point, but anyway, <laughs> uh, we needed to do something more. Uh, so uh, I have divided the presentation on several um, periods that I consider important for our company. So this, this is the first period. So what do you do when you don't have um, any money. Uh, you have like mar zero marketing budget. And this is the year 2005 uh, at which GoDaddy had aired their first commercial um, at Super Bowl. So we are here, no money for advertisement. And they are here like millions of dollars for advertising. So what can we do? Uh, the first thing we decided that we should do <laughs> uh, is that we should count on our customers' love. Uh, so how do you use your customers to bring more customers in? 
uh, that's a no-brainer, I guess. Um, you, you, you should try to make them use you more, to buy more from you, and you should try them to um, motivate them to refer other people to your company. Easier to said than be done. Um, and even if you um, create a lot of products that they can do ad buy additionally, and even if you have a great referral system that gives them bonuses and stuff like this, this is not enough. Uh, the, the main motivation for people to do either of these two things is to like what you're doing and to be happy with your service. So um, going towards this aim to count on, uh, on our customers' love, we needed to create this love. And how do you create love <laughs> among your customers? Of course, it's customer service. Uh, and it was easy in the beginning because we had few customers. Uh, we were, it was easy to answer each of their questions, um, no matter when it came or no matter how hard it is, no matter if we know how to answer it or not. We had enough time to investigate the stuff and find the answer, even if we don't know it. Uh, and this is the point at which we decided that we are not going to be like most of the web hosting companies at that point that were um, telling their customers, well, your problem is not server related. This is something that comes from whatever you have put on, on your account and we, we, don't, we can't fix it. Um, we decided that we are going to dig into what customers are asking and try to find the solution and help them wherever we can, no matter if it's something on our servers or it's something on their side. So um, this is the second lesson we learned and I think it's, it's important for every business. You should understand that customer service is one of your most important marketing channels. Uh, the way you're communicating with your customers is maybe the most important message you can bring to the world. Um, you don't hear that very often from marketing people. They usually um, more focused on the, the other marketing channels like uh, advertising and uh, social media and stuff like this. But for our company, this was something uh, really important from the day one. Um, so, but to tell you the truth, even all of these uh, 100, 1,000 customers um, had brought all of their friends in and bought everything that we had in stock for them, it's still not enough. It's good. Uh, I think it's very valuable, but you have to do more to enlarge the base on which you're, you're building. But still, what do you do with zero marketing budget? How do you do that? Um, you experiment with the search engine optimization. Uh, because organic traffic, it's free. So you should go and try. At least that was what we decided 10 years ago. And 10 years ago, mayb it was maybe easier. I'm not sure if, if it was easier, actually. But uh, there were things that were working then that they're not working anymore. But the main uh, rules of the game are the same. In order to be liked by Google or by any search engine, uh, there are several main rules. You need to have valuable content. You need to have links from external websites. And you need to have uh, links from important external websites. Um, so it sounds easy. Uh, we decided to start with the first step at content, which uh, it depends only on ourselves. But OK, we are a web hosting company. What kind of content can we add? We have like one page with our uh, offer and maybe one page explaining what web hosting is and maybe one page on domain names if we stretch it that much. What else? Uh, it wasn't that obvious at that point. Maybe today it seems more easier for you because there are a lot of companies that are doing what we started uh, doing at this point. Uh, so where we look for answer when, uh, when we are not sure what to do? Uh, again, look at your customers. The thing that we were doing, uh, giving them support and uh, attending to their questions, uh, it took us a few months to understand which are the most important applications that are they are using. At this point, this was Mambo, uh, PHPVB, Coppermine Gallery, um, there were several others, uh, WordPress. Mm. So when we started receiving questions about these applications and we started uh, counting the numbers of the installations of these applications on our servers, we realized that these are the topics that are interesting for our customers. So we start building uh, content 
that's based on what's interesting for our customers. We um, launched our first tutorials. We launched uh, things like how to install Mambo or how to arrange your gallery in Coppermine or stuff like this or um, ev anything that came as a question and anything that we believe people are interested in was published on our site as part of a tutorial under our brand. So uh, soon enough we had fairly a large collection of um, content. Uh, it was valuable, people were liking it, people were using it. Uh, and some of it even started appearing on Google um, some places because there was no anything that was good enough at that point for this without any uh, extra um, effort on our part. Um, so th this was the first step and it was doing a good job for us, but it's not, it wasn't enough. Of course, we should make the other steps too. Uh, so have many links. Uh, at this point, uh, we built on this strategy of uh, looking of adding to what our customers need uh, and on top of the tutorials we um, edit, uh, we launched our first um, template gallery. This was an investment. <laughs> we hired a designer that is going to work on this and prov um, produce some templates that we will be um, distributing for free. So what's the idea? The templates give us a really good um, coverage because each of these templates had a link. It was free for use, but it has a link back to us. Um, at this point, there were web hosting companies right uh, in this year, 2005, uh, that were doing really not that pleasant things, like hiding links in their customers' websites, like really un invisible links that Google was still counting back then. So we were seeing other web hosting companies coming uh, on top of uh, important searches based on this technique, which consider without asking people, just putting a link there on their website just because it's hosted on their server, uh, which was kind of not very nice. <laughs> so we decided <laughs> that's not something we <laughs> ever will consider. <laughs> and the templates was much, uh, was really better because you're giving something and the only thing that you require as a return is a link back, which is valuable for us. And if people want, they can move it away. Um, so the templates um, got really uh, popular and uh, they gave us a lot of uh, urge in the search engine, uh, in the search engines and especially on the uh, not so um, competitive keywords like for example um, Mambo hosting and uh, PHP V hosting. Yeah, uh, the other thing is that we created a separate page for uh, specific hosting needs. We didn't have just one page web hosting. We had like page like um, web hosting, um, uh, Mambo web hosting, which was saying what's Mambo and if that it's compatible with our services and that we will provide some more support uh, for people that are using Mambo. Um, so, but here comes the m most exciting part of the story. <laughs> At some point, um, we decided that uh, we will contact actually the Mambo because it was really the biggest thing in the world and we will uh, write them an email and ask them um, if they want to partner with us. <laughs> we wanted to, we offer them to host the official Mambo Foundation website. In, and what we uh, would require as a return was a link from the website. And I don't know if you imagine what this was. And we received yes. <laughs> and I don't know if you imagine what this is. It is like a high school girl writing a love letter to Brad Pitt asking him for prompt and he's saying yes and coming with her to the prompt. We were like, wow, <laughs> this was groundbreaking. Um, we received yes, we hosted the, the Mambo Foundation website. We received this link, which was really important for us. And it led to a lot of um, a price on another keyword that is really important it, and really competitive and it was web hosting itself. It, uh, there was time after that and when you write web hosting in Google, um, you will see SiteGround on the first page and even in the first three, top three results. Um, so the lessons we learned at this point, <laughs> the first one is that um, you should know your customers and learn from their needs. Uh, don't expect to ask your customers, like, what do you need and to receive an answer. You should uh, collect the data, what exactly are they using, what are they asking you, what are their needs, and uh, build your 
marketing and brand and business strategy based on this information. This is very important. So our strategy I was telling you about, it was uh, search engine optimization um, targeted, but it was built on our customers' experience and, and what we have learned from our customers. And the other one is that you should be bold enough to write a love letter to Brad Pitt. Sometimes in your business, uh, things happen just out of nowhere. Uh, if you're not taking chances, uh, it, you're not going anywhere. Uh, yeah, it was a chance and it turned out really amazingly well. And you should do that, this no matter what you're doing in your life for a living. So, but even if you're the most popular girl in the school, <laughs> you still get out of school and you still need to decide what to do in your life, like seriously. Uh, so uh, there was, after this um, intense search engine <laughs> optimization period, there come another period in our company uh, development in which mm, we had, we, there were several things going on simultaneously. We continued with our search engine strategy. Uh, at this point, Joomla was born. And um, because we were so much into what's going on, we were among the first people that wrote tutorials about Joomla. Uh, I think that there, there were uh, moments in, in the history when Google was considering our website more uh, important about some Joomla related keywords than Joomla org itself because we had written some of the stuff before it was published on the official website. Uh, so it was going well, it was, uh, go we had other partners coming in, so um, that's for the search engine strategy, we were doing good. Uh, but it was not all. Uh, at the back end, we started investing uh, really a lot in the technology um, research and development. Um, at this point, sh we are um, targeting shared hosting, which is the considered as the lowest level in the in the ho web hosting. And uh, the companies in this segment usually what they do is they gather whatever is um, available. They hire some servers from somewhere, they put some software that they haven't written, it's free or they have bought it from somewhere. They stack everything together and they start selling it. And usually where there is a problem with this thing that they have uh, collected like this, they said, well, that's the limitation of, web ho of shared web hosting. You can't do nothing about it. Um, there was, um, we, di we, weren't, um, we didn't agree with that uh, attitude. When there was a problem with the services that we are seeing on a continuous basis, uh, it's not okay to say um, it's not something that we can do. We sh you should try and find a solution. And in the technology field, uh, I will mention just several things uh, as an illustration. I'm not going to into too much details, but uh, back at this year, we were among the first, uh, we were the first hosting company that invented um, the, the possibility of having, uh, for example, multiple PHP versions on one and the same server. We were the first that isolated shared accounts via CH root uh, mechanism, which made the shared hosting really much more safer that, than it was at that point. And we were, uh, the first to invent a um, monitoring system that uh, dramatically decreased the downtime. Because at this point, uh, people in the shared hosting industry, well, if they were monitoring their servers at all and not counting on customers calling in and saying, my website is down, what's going on? <laughs> the best things we were seeing at this point were like automation of uh, monitoring at five or 10 minutes. And what we came up with, it was our uh, administration department, was a um, monitoring system that is uh, monitoring the server uh, every five seconds, which is really dramatic um, difference. Uh, so anyway, this is just uh, what we, what's going on in the technology field. And uh, what's, what was going on with the support? Uh, that's an interesting question because we start growing after the, uh, after Google start loving us, <laughs> we start growing a lot and fast. And you know, anyone from here that has started a company and it starts growing knows that this means pain for your customer support. So um, there were times it, it was really painful for us. We had to take dif difficult decisions, uh, but um, <laughs> at the end it was all, um, turned down to being really efficient, to making your uh, support systems work in a way that will allow your employees to answer fast the questions, 
to invest in a lot in um, education of your support and a very important thing to invest in the co company culture in such a way that the experienced people in the customer support are not leaving your company. They're staying with you because the more experienced one becomes in the customer service, uh, the more efficient he is. So uh, these were the three ways that we uh, mm, found out to keep the level of support. But I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. There were times that our support was not that good because you, need, you, you have this much customers and your support is still here. And until you catch up to here, there were times that we have been bad or at least not that good as always. Uh, there were times when we were tempted to uh, start um, saying for at least some of the support issues that they're not hosting related, but we found out that th that's not true. We, we uh, came back to our lesson number two, or I don't remember exactly the number that I was telling you, that support is something very important for us. So we, instead of um, giving up, up to this temptation, we found a way to give the same level of support no matter how many customers are coming in. So these three things are, uh, were going on together uh, at this point, and um, we had this um, uh, impression that we are doing really good. Uh, Google loves us, people find us on Google, so they bought our service because we are there. Uh, and then uh, once they become our customers, they're usually happy because the support is really good and they don't have downtime and they're secure, they don't get hacked because of the technology things that we, we did and we, we were kind of lazy. We thought we can't do more. People know us and they're happy with our service, we are doing good. So uh, there was a point at which we were not really doing much anything newer. And uh, at this point, uh, and at the beginning of 2011, something happened that completely uh, changed our perception of um, being uh, relaxed and <laughs> everything's going fine. Do, you, do any of you can <laughs> make a guess what happened? No one? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we have winner. I know you you deserve the prize <laughs> and much more. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, the the panda algorithm <laughs> came launched at Google and it hit us. Uh, it hit us especially hard on the web hosting keyword. Um, we were in the first page and a couple of weeks after that we were nowhere to be found in the first 50 pages on Google. Um, so did this, did this kill us? No, but it went another lesson for us. Um, Google standing is not what makes a brand strong. It's something that's good, it's cool, uh, but if you don't have the other two things that I was talking about, if, if we had only put investment in the Google standing the other the three years ago, this would have been detrimental for us. But because we had this foundation of good service and of a really innovative technology, it was not the end. Uh, and of course I should admit that uh, Google didn't uh, wipe us from any, all, all of the keywords. All the other that were niche, we were still uh, very strong. But the main keyword that was important for our business, the web hosting one, it's gone. So um, this is really a crisis for our business, but it's a good one in a way because um, it made us think of new ways to, uh, <laughs> to reach what we are aiming for uh, or and to reach more people actually. Uh, so this was the point at which we tried to see what's, what can we do better. So where are we going after this crisis? Um, we, we had two things that we decided to target as issues. Um, we know that we had great technologies, but actually no one else knew about them. It was something that we do behind the scene. And you know, when, when uh, your customers are happy, they don't realize uh, what effort goes behind this happiness. <laughs> when they're not, they realize what's going on and that you're not putting effort, but it's n it doesn't work the other way around. And um, there was another thing that we realized, but I will talk in about it in more details in a minute. But it's that uh, being first on Google for Joomla hosting, for example, we still were for in on the first page for Joomla hosting, but being first on Google for Joomla hosting doesn't put you first in the hearts of the Joomla community. And this is something extremely important. I, uh, you can't just rely on Google. You, you should be more proactive in another ways. So um, we addressed the first issue by um, starting to communicate 
uh, really proactively to our customers and to all the community that would be interested about all the things that we were doing. And this is challenging because uh, what's done in the admin department is something really highly technical and our customers, we don't need them to know that. Uh, we don't require them to understand everything. So um, what we did first was that uh, we started creating infographics for every new thing that we launched that were funny and that were explaining the things that are happening in an easy to understand way for everyone. Um, apart from this, we started to be much more active on social media and we started uh, posting a lot of blog posts about what's going on in the company, explaining and stuff like this. Uh, so this really build up and people started realizing that um, we are doing stuff that they weren't aware of. And it was uh, dramatically different from what other web hosting companies were doing at that point. Uh, but it wasn't enough because our website still looked like 90% of the web hosting websites on, on the internet at that point. Like uh, uh, smiley, beautiful women, f <laughs> female face, uh, several features and a price. That's what you see on almost any web shared web hosting brand. Uh, and that's not what we are because we consider ourselves to be different. Uh, this was the time when we, we actually realized that we were lazy and that we needed um, to start communicating our values and what we are doing and th that we need a uh, total rebrand. Uh, so we did this, we changed our website, we changed our logo, we changed the way we are communicating and we put much more uh, emphasis on our philosophy of doing things and not on price and features because price and features, everyone has this. And this, this is not a real differentiator. Uh, but how you approach problems, um, the way you do, uh, the way you react when there is a crisis, that's what sets you apart. And of course, the support is another thing that's what was important. Um, I should say that this, um, this strategy was really uh, very successful. Uh, after the launch of the new website, uh, we see like uh, double the size of the sales uh, in s few months. It was really something that worked really, really well. And I should say here that um, when you do a rebranding, it should, from my perspective, you shouldn't do just, uh, I don't like the logo anymore. We should try something different. Uh, I don't think that that works. Uh, if you're doing rebranding, you should have a real story behind it. Uh, the new brand should, you should have a motivation to tell something new and you should think about uh, telling exactly what's on your mind. Um, so, yeah, let's go to the other issue. Oh, okay, the lesson that we learned. Uh, so the lesson that we learned here is um, uh, in order to have a really valuable brand for the people, you should do good things first, but then you should also tell the world that you're doing good things. Uh, doing only one of the things doesn't really work. Well, doing good things is great. It's good for your karma, <laughs> uh, uh, even if you're not telling the world. And, but uh, in the business, uh, it's not enough to have uh, the good things coming back in your next life. So you need the results now. <laughs> so you should tell the world that you're doing good things in order to have these results. But telling the world that you're doing good things without doing them, it's not good either. So <laughs> do both of them, all of you. Um, so the other thing that I was talking about, yeah, uh, when we were talking about the mambo love, like uh, the first love in any human's life, it was really um, important for us. But of course it was superficial. We didn't know mambo at all. We, we knew, or, or Brad Pitt, in <laughs> we knew that mambo is popular, that people like it. So when we got the attention, we were like, wow. But we weren't in that much in the community. We, were, we weren't aware what's even happening around. Um, and of course, this was not something that was meant to be uh, a deep and long term relationship. Uh, we start, so uh, these last three years, we have started a dramatically um, different approach towards the communities. And it's not only Joomla, uh, it's Joomla and WordPress mainly because these are the two uh, main uh, applications that are used by our customers. We have other approach. We are we are really uh, much more involved now. We are sponsoring. Uh, we have sponsored more than 50 events for the last two years, um, 
And these are just the two biggest Joomla events that we have been main sponsors to uh, last year, but there are many more li small ones. And that's not all. It's not only about giving financial support. Uh, it's about being here and meeting all of you and talking to you and uh, receiving your feedback and finding what's important for people that are using Joomla, uh, what's important in the relationship where they host and what they are looking for, what they're missing. Uh, that's something that's really important for us. And uh, being here this year, I, I should say that it's so much fulfilling to see that people know us and to have received such a great feedback. I think that this was one of the best um, things we have done. <laughs> and here comes our my last lesson, and it's um, both personal and professional. So um, successful long-term relationship requires commitment and involvement. From a personal perspective, my relationship with the brand wouldn't have been so successful if uh, I was like um, not that involved with the brand uh, as a whole. If I was not uh, taking care of what's going on in the admin department or what's happening with the customer services, if I was only looking how good the website is or what the analytics says and stuff like this, uh, I don't think that the, the marketing strategy of our company would have been so successful. Uh, and the same goes uh, about our relationship with uh, f between our brand and the communities that we are trying to support and trying to be part of. Uh, it's the same. So we are committed and um, we will be involved. And this is something that uh, uh, I see as a long-term strategy for, for us from now on. Um, so thank you for your attention. Uh, I hope it was interesting for you. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer. <laughs>
the biggest challenge for a marketeer is to find the true um, personality of the company he's working for and uh, communicates it to the outer world. It's not to make the brand from something that's not existing. Thank you for the question. Anyone? <laughs> um, well, uh, that's a hard one. <laughs> um, maybe as, as a brand, I think that uh, support is the most important for our brand. Yeah. And d uh, doing, I think it's important from marketing perspective also because um, when you realize that um, your com the communication of your company is not only what you put on Facebook or what you write in your blog, it's much, much more what you are uh, telling to each of one of your customers in any ticket and any chat session, um, you're on another level because this makes you um, complete. You're doing the same things on each level. Yeah, well, um, we, we have a lot of requests from sponsorship, of course. Um, we are trying to sponsor as much as we can. Of course, we can't sponsor any, anyone. Uh, we make the decision which one to sponsor based on several criteria. Uh, usually, it's um, the clarity of the request and what you're trying to um, achieve and how our sponsorship will help you. Um, in Brazil, to tell you the truth, we didn't expect to receive much more new customers to some extent. Um, pr most, mostly because of the language barrier. Uh, we are targeting English speaking communities right now. Uh, we don't have support in other language. And um, so that's why um, usually it's harder for us to have to see a business value in sponsoring an event in a community that's not speaking English. But we are still doing it. Actually, last. Um, Mm, last week we had uh, we had sponsored Joomla Day France, and one of the speakers is uh, a customer of ours. He's actually a reseller, and uh, he's one of our biggest resellers. So uh, he was our big motivation to become a sp more involved with the Joomla France, and he was our representative there because. Uh, none of us ca can go to Joomla Day France and be effective just because we don't speak French. And but he was there and he was very effective for us because he spoke French and he was our spokesman and, and out of his own experience, which is really good. Anyone? Where are you located? Uh, we are located in Bulgaria. I, I told that in the beginning. Uh, SiteGround was found in Bulgaria. All the people that work for SiteGround live and work in Bulgaria, but uh, our web servers are all around the world, mainly in the States, the biggest part, some in here in Europe and the Netherlands, and we have some in Singapore. Question about Singapore. If I have a client, say, in Thailand, the Philippines, mm -hmm. would it work? Because if we're trying to work from here to Europe to China, it's extremely close. Uh, thank you. Will you answer <laughs> this question? <laughs> Thank you very much.